what I, what I certainly see is that the, you know, HH is gunning for ECL. No doubt. Okay? Okay? I mean, he can't wait to get at you. Okay? He can, he can, he can make any statement, you know, that, no, I'm, I'm not after, you know, Edgar Lungu, you know, his, his officials can say, no, no, he's not after, you know, the truth of the matter is that the man is traveling at the high speed on this road of vengeance against Edgar Lungu. ECO locked him up at Mkobeko for a silly offense which he himself committed in Mongo. Okay? For a silly offense which he committed to excite people, to show people in Mongo that he, he was very popular. And he wanted, you know, to block the presidential motorcade. And I said it, you know, on, on many programs, you know, that if it were in other countries, HH would have been shot, would have been shot dead that day by the security people because he was risking the life of a head of state. So he does something silly himself and now, now he turns around to be vengeful against the, the action that was taken against him. The difference you know, that the position that I took at that time was that he, what he did was not reasonable. Right? Okay? And I made that statement when ECO was still in office. I said, yes, what has happened is silly, but this is not treason. I still went ahead to pay my visit, you know, in prison. Not because he hadn't done something wrong, but because he was a colleague in the opposition. So there's no doubt that the man is still bitter from that experience. So all this thing about, you know, the Lungus mm. is, 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 is targeted at ECL at the end of the day. So he has to harness his... Watch the entire video, my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. I will be looking at, uh, you know, uh, governance generally, I must add, and... Uh, oh, Mr. Governance. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know how we would describe that, but uh, governance is what we'll be discussing generally. Uh, and in this case, we're looking at um, this, uh, the governance system of the United Party for National Development, uh, who are at the helmet of power right now. Maybe to kickstart of this, I know there's been a lot uh, in the past few weeks, uh, and uh, if not a month ago, uh, with regards to the law of law and uh, that coming into conflict with people thinking this is a government that promised that uh, the rule was, uh, you know, they will uphold the rule of law when ruling us, but uh, you know, it's certainly different to what is pertaining on the ground. I'd love to hear your thoughts on such sentiments as an economic uh, front party. How do you describe the UPND style of rule? Of, uh, rule? Well, the, the, uh, Eugene, the rule of law is, is, a, is a combination of a number of components, mm -hmm. okay? It's a, it's a composite phrase. Mm -hmm. uh, it includes the, fundamentally the principle that everybody is equal before the law. Mm -hmm. That's one of the fundamental principles of the rule of law. Mm -hmm. The rule of law include the principle of the presumption of innocence that you are innocent until you are proven guilty by a tribunal established by law the rule of law means that you cannot be subjected to arbitrary arrest or detention 
before investigations are completed. The rule of law involves the, the respect of the rights of the suspect. The rule of law includes the, a citizen being subjected or undergoing a fair trial. So it is a composite phrase that involves the, all these the, uh, sub components. And uh, it is disappointing, I'm sure, not only to me, but to many, many citizens in this country, that a, a man who stood on the anti hill screamed to the high heavens that he was unfairly treated under the PF administration, that he was a victim of arbitrary detentions, that he was a victim of arbitrary arrests, and he promised the Zambian people that if he came to power, he would not want any Zambian to undergo what he went through. And yet, it is the complete opposite today. We saw breaches of the fundamentals of the rule of law and the PF. We are seeing worse incidents now under the UPND. What is even more disappointing is that HH has decided to turn not only blind ears to this, but even a blind ear and blind eyes and ears. He has completely gone back on his word. What he saw as injustice under PF, he now sees as the things that are justifiable. I don't even have to go through the litany of our citizens that have been subjected to these breaches of the rule of law. You remember incidents sometime last year when people were being bundled up from Lusaka and driven all the way to a place, a remote place like Shangombo, because some UPND cadre has reported them to the police in Shangum. Until it became so embarrassing to the UPND itself that Cornelius Mwetua as party spokesperson had to say this has to come to an end. Now, if it came to an end because he, the party spokesperson said so, mm. it meant that he, it was a co orchestrated originally by the party itself. We had never seen that kind of thing before. Never. That a person that has been arrested or a person or a citizen whom the police can send a decent call out if they want me at the police station. Surely they don't have to come at 4 a.m. to my house. They will send me a call out and they know that I'll submit to the police. So, you ask a very important question because it goes to the bedrock of governance itself. That's what defines what governance or misgovernance is. So, HH has been a big, big letdown to the Zambian people. And this is not even a political statement. It is something that is truthful. It is something that is uh, in the public domain now. That a man that the people of Zambia believed would turn around the injustices that they saw under PF is orchestrating those injustices today, is allowing those injustices to live on. 
You spoke of uh, you know people being bundled on uh, police vehicles taken to the far far areas of the country just to go and answer to allegations made by maybe uh, one particular individual who maybe might be uh, you know belong to the ruling party yeah. as uh, uh, one violation now. Clearly, um, the side of the UPND has been that uh, those that were doing the wrong or those that do the wrong things. The institutions that are mandated to investigate is the ones that is at uh, work here, not the UPND at all. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, I've always said this, that anybody who is going to tell you, anybody who is going to tell you that uh, the police does not read the mood of those that are in power and they are operating autonomously is still telling you a lie. They will be telling you a lie. Anybody that is going to tell you Eugene, that the, the police as an institution and the officers in that institution do not read the mood of those that are in power will be telling you a lie. They are very good at reading the mood of those that are in power and they how to please the powers that be. Okay. Yeah. So, that I can tell you for a fact. Mm. Uh, there's, there's, there's one particular statement which uh, the Inspector General of Police uh, reacted to uh, as, as we were ending the week last week. Uh, IG Grafer on Samba, you know, uh, uh, complained or rather he issued a statement to say those that are saying that, uh, you know, police is dentening the image of the UPND because of how it's carrying out its duties uh, are speaking on the uh, on the side of being ignorant and uh, he was reacting to what uh, UPND National Youth Chairperson Gilbert Lusoniso said when he appeared on uh, Radio Phoenix Let the People Talk because then he was uh, talking about the police brutality that we've seen you know that uh, was reported in some, pa uh, some past few days or months now uh, as, 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 as being uh, you know maybe pushed by the government, you know, or the government having a blessing at, uh, at, at that brutality that was happening. So there was uh, an exchange of words there. Uh, one issued a statement on a media platform, and uh, the other person re replied to say, uh, well, the police is not dating any, anybody's Im uh, image when uh, conducting duties. Look, look. If, 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 there is, if there is any institution that is very good at decampaigning a political party, it's the police. That I can tell you for a fact. The police are very good at decampaigning the government in power okay. or the party in power. Because they do stupid things. Sorry to use that word. They do things that they are outside the civil liberties, the principles of civil, uh, civil liberties of citizens. Mm. And like I've said earlier, nobody would believe, not even a fellow in Chaisa here, would believe that the 12 police officers that went, you know, to pick up a man or mamba from a car wash, beat him up. I met him recently, I met him, you know, last week. I couldn't even shake his right hand because he's still hurting. He's still nursing injuries in his right hand right arm mm. no citizen would believe that uh, that group of officers is not denting the image of uh, the government nobody and nobody would, would believe that uh, they are not doing that on behalf of the government so Whereas, whereas it was a sad incident, the Emmanuel Mandela, which is the most, the most recent, mm -hmm. it's very good for the citizens to see what UPND is all about. So, Cuba Dilswanis was right. He was very right in the observation that he made. And Musamba was wrong. And you know, that's what they always do when they've been appointed. They're very excited. We saw it with the Lebuka Joba. 
they get very excited. As if I for the first time. But the day of recording will come. Can you say for that day comes, they will have finished the UPND. Can you say it's it's uh, it's uh, the politicians themselves that uh, tend to you know make the work of the police hard? No. What 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 did the man or member do? What did the man or member do? They didn't send the call out to him. If the police had said, look, we followed this man. You know, to the car wash because we sent him a call out, he didn't come. We sent him a second one, he didn't, he didn't come. We probably sent him the third one, he didn't come. So we had to mount a money hunt. They probably would have had an argument. So what did what did the poor guy do? What did Esther Lung do that they needed to go with grinders, you know, to to go and look for one vehicle which they suspected to be at their residence. Why didn't they send her a policy call out and say to her, there is a suspected vehicle registration number X, which we believe is at your residence. Under the following circumstances, there's a complainant over this matter. Please will you surrender that vehicle to us? Sure, as a decent law abiding citizen, she would have done that. So in what way do we as politicians make policy work difficult? We don't. I, I, I mean to ask that uh, uh, based on uh, you know what has been said when it comes to the police and uh, the government, them play, pledging allegiance to the government of the day, because uh, it's been for a very long time we've always believed that uh, you know politi uh, politi politicians generally would uh, you know uh, command the police to do things. Uh, we heard that in the in the previous regime, where you know the uh, the party that is in power right now would complain on the way the police would carry themselves the time they were in the opposition towards them, and it's a continuous discussion that goes on. Uh, each party that forms government, obviously, uh, you know, would want the police to do what they want. Now look, the 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 nature the nature of the state mm. in the third world country. Is totally different from the characteristics of the state in a developed world. Right. Okay. Mm. In the developed world, even in a small country like Israel, the police, the police, you exhibit independence. Eugene, you read. You know, up to now, you know that uh, there are still cases that are running against, against former Prime Minister Boris Johnson mm -hmm. in London. Mm -hmm. Because he's been under investigations by the Metropolitan Police in London mm -hmm. for having breached COVID rules. Okay? The, the, you know, the police called him for an interview and he has ended up losing his part position purely on account that he, the man is under investigation okay prime minister netanyahu in israel he's been indicted by the police you saw him drive you know to the police station for the police to go and take a statement from him it, it doesn't happen in a third world country. Why? Because the state in a third world country is believed to be synonymous with the, those that are in power or the person that is at the helm of power. Mm -hmm. Okay? In a developed in a developed country like the United States, the CIA bugs the phone of the president of the United States. Joe Biden now. They bag that for why? Because he could be a danger to the state himself. He is not the state. Here, hope you will not do that. We don't know who HH talks to. We don't know whether the people that he, he talks to, he talks to them in the interest of this nation. 
They don't do that. So, there is a fundamental difference between the state as it operates in a, in, in a, in, in, in a developed country and the, the way it operates in the third world country. In the third world country, the state is synonymous with it. those that are in power and the person that is at the helm of power. You only come to learn the wrongdoings of the person who is at the helm of power in a third world country when they are out of power, not when they are in power. In fact, I'll tell you my position myself. I personally believe that even in this constitutional article that uh, the president must be must enjoy immunity mm -hmm. from arrest while in office is not is not right. It is high time from our experience that it should be removed. Okay. Why do we want to continue as a country having somebody in the state house who is a criminal and wait until after five years? Why? Why do we want the, you know, a criminal to continue running the affairs of state of this country for five years? Because the article in the constitution says that he is immune, you know, from any criminal or civil investigations. No. The person that you put in the state house must ensure he himself or herself must ensure that he is above reproach and that he is law abiding during that period. He must not be given a moratorium of five years to do wrong things. So those are things that he cause problems in third world countries. Mm. We, we, we get to look at, uh, you know, just uh, the few issues that have happened in the past uh, days. <laughs> One of them was, um, you know, the resignation of uh, the Auditor General, which raised uh, a couple of uh, issues. And uh, there are people that feel that uh, the Auditor General was pushed to that level for him to basically just resign. So what do you want me to say? I'd love to get your position as, a, of course, an economic friend on that. Is there pressure that was exhibited on uh, the resignation of uh, the Auditor General? Maybe just to... I'll tell you what I've yes. discovered. Yeah. I'll tell you what I've discovered. What I've discovered is that uh, Dr. Sichembe was, I think, Accountant General mm. at the Ministry of Finance. And I've spoken to a few people within the Ministry of Finance and outside the Ministry of Finance. Mm. And the information we have gathered as EF is that there was a lot of wrongdoing mm. at the Ministry of Finance mm. during that time. A lot of wrongdoing. Somebody was telling me a story of how six million kwacha cash was withdrawn and just disappeared. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, unless and until Dr. Sitchin proves himself innocent, I will not canvas his case that he has been unfairly treated. No. Okay. Yeah. Look, anybody that has the money, for example, so sorry, I'm not, you know, one of the proponents of that school of thought. We get to do something also that uh, raised a bit of talk and um, one of our issues now that people are thinking, uh, I don't know if this was just uh, according to the people that are in government today, that was just uh, a stance to win public sympathy according to them. Uh, the. Uh, you know the briefing that was held by the you know the, the, the children to the former president with regards to the treatment they've uh, you know been uh, given since uh, President uh, Ed, Edward Sagarungu, the former president, of course, left power. They cried foul that the state is uh, uh, trying them in uh, the general, or should I say, on the media, as opposed to court, and they want to be taken to court to answer to, to, answer to allegations that uh, are being uh, labelled against them before the public. Yes. I think the issue there is this. Firstly, the constitution, <coughs> excuse me, mm. the constitution of the Republic of Zambia guarantees you and I the right to private property. You have a right to own property in this country 
under the Zambian constitution. Okay? Mm. And that property cannot be taken away from you without the due process of law. Second point. Mm. I think the point that the Lungus were making was this short circuiting of that process by the DPP. If you recall, that press conference came on the heels of the DPP saying that he had made an application to court without trying, you know, or though that owned the property and he wanted this property forfeited to the state. Now, if you, if, if you suspect me to be in possession of property that is uh, suspected to be process of crime, mm. under the Zambian constitution, like I said earlier, I enjoy the right of the presumption of innocence. That I'm innocent until I'm proven guilty. Mm. So the way you do it is take me to court, prosecute me, and the way you do it is take a statement from me. Mm. I don't have to read about uh, your steps in the media. Of course, we're in a democracy. It is always good that the public knows what is happening to every citizen, but you don't do it in advance. If you remember, when the DPP took those steps, the lawyer, Makebi Zulu, issued a statement. He said, uh, how, how can you go to the press before you even save any process, any court documents on us as lawyers, or even on the so-called court accused? Hmm. Okay. So I think there is a bit of excitement also within the DPP's office and the anti-corruption office, uh, you know, over over these matters, and that's how they are, and that's why they are messing themselves up. Mm. That's why that's why we can't see the, the the expected results in this fight against corruption because right, right among also we are You know, I mean, I I. I worked to you know, myself, Eugene, you know, in local government. Mm. You know, I remember in the 1980-81 Shamana coup, the late Joshua Smuzia was DPP. I never, I never heard or saw DPP Joshua Smuzia go and hold a press conference that he, we have arrested the, the Edward Shamana, we are prosecuting, you know, Edward Shamana because he wanted to overthrow the government. And there are many DPPs that came, you know, after that. Joshua Smuzia, you know, Grigory Piri, the retired judge now. I never, I never saw them in the press. This excitement that we are seeing now from these small boys, Every day they want to be in the place. Every day they want to be in the place. Oh my God, that's not how that job is done. Can you give reverence, you know, to that office? Okay. Mm. So I think the Lungus have a right to cry foul that if you are going to try them in the court of public opinion, then it means you don't have a case against them. If you have a case against them, you do it quietly, you take them, you know, before, you know, a tribunal established by law, meaning a court of law, go and produce the evidence, and then, away from the DPP's press statements, let the magistrate, you know, make a, a decision. If they are aggrieved by that decision by the magistrate, you know that they will the right to go to the high court. If they are aggrieved by the decision of the High Court, you know that they've got the right to go to the Court of, to the, to the court of Appeal. If they are still not satisfied with the judgment of the Court of Appeal, you know that they've got the right to go to the Supreme Court. So why does the DPP want to make himself the Alpha and the Omega in the criminal justice system? I think that is wrong. 
let's get to um, with some of the sentiments that were also made. Uh, I remember, uh, uh, you know, um, the member of the Patriotic Front who is also in the race to becoming, um, you know, in the race to the president of uh, the Patriotic Front, uh, Mr. Brandon Mbubede. After that particular, you know, briefing uh, from the Lungus there, he issued a statement to say that the UPND, the way they are conducting themselves towards uh, the former president, is like his, his immunity was lifted already. Uh, can we say that uh, there's a bit of truth in that in that statement there? With the regards, or maybe the question should be, how how is the treatment uh, you know towards the former president? Is it sour when it comes to the current president and the former president? I don't know. I, I, I don't want to to speculate. I don't know about the, you know or the nature of the statement. Yeah. I can only I can only I can only you know, descend that you know from from the circumstantial evidence, mm. you know, of what I see. Mm. Okay. What I what I certainly see is that you know HH is gunning for ECL, no doubt. Okay. Okay. I mean, he can't wait to get at him. Okay. He can he can he can make any statement. You know that no, I'm I'm not after you know Edgar Lungo. You know. His, his officials can say no, no. He's not after you know. The truth of the matter is that the man is traveling at the high speed on this road of vengeance against Eddie Alongo. He said, locked him up at Mukoweko for a silly offense which he himself committed in Mongo. Okay, for a silly offense which he committed to excite people, to show people in Mongo that he, he was very popular. And he wanted, you know, to block the presidential motorcade. And I said it, you know, on many programs, you know, that if it were in other countries, HH would have been shot, would have been shot dead that day by the security people. Because he was risking the life of a head of state. So he does something silly himself. And now, now it turns around to be vengeful against the, the action that was taken against him. The difference, you know, that the position that I took at that time was that what he did was not reasonable. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I made that statement when ECA was still in office. I said, yes, what has happened is silly. But this is not treason. I still went ahead to pay my visit, you know, in prison. Not because he hadn't done something wrong, but because he was a colleague in the opposition. So there's no doubt that the man is still bitter from that experience. So all this thing about, you know, the Lungos mm. is easy. Is, is targeted at ECL at the end of the day. So he has to harass his children, he has to harass his wife, you know, and, and uh, stress the man, and, and that kind of thing. You know, but you see, what is, what is really uh, saddening is that uh, HH has more important problems on his hands right, than ECL. He has more important things. The people here in the Chipata compound are going hungry. They don't care about ECL. As far as they are concerned, he's already out of power. What they want is for him to deal with issues of their bread and butter. This morning, there's a, there's a contingent of police officers on the streets in town to throw out the street vendors. Those street vendors are not the problem. They are a symptom of a collapsed economy, an economy which he promised to come and fix. They are doing that because they want jobs from him, and he promised them jobs. So my view is that he has much more important thing that should be keeping him awake at night, and not ECL. Even if, even if he, even assuming that he locked up ECO tomorrow, how will that improve the Kwacha dollar rate? How will that feed the people of Chawama? How will that reduce the, the price of fuel in this country? How in God's name 
the locking up of this year, just turn around this economy overnight. So if he wants to listen to an independent piece of advice, is Bwana. If ECO has done something wrong, the law will catch up with him. And you are not the police officer. Leave that to the police. In the meantime, get on with the business that the Zambian people voted you for. Let's look at uh, uh, previously. I, I know that, uh, I don't know, maybe this, this is a Zambian way or the African way that uh, when uh, you know a leader leaves power, uh, there's um, the issue of following them up uh, based on what they did when they were at the moment of power. We'll talk about uh, you know what happened during the MMD Chiruwa Monawasa scenario. <coughs> Let's talk about also uh, Rupia Banda, uh, the late uh, uh, you know uh, Michael Chilvesat as well. How do we change that going forward in our in our political discourse? We change we change that Eugene by what I said earlier. Mm. Let's remove the article that uh, allows. Uh, <coughs> A sitting head of state to be immune from any criminal investigation or even prosecution until they get out of power. I think we have learned now from the past. Mm. Okay? And, and I can tell you that article also has a, a, a historical context because we inherited it from the colonial uh, era. Mm. Okay? As you know, in the United Kingdom, the Queen is the head of state. The Prime Minister is head of government. And because the Queen is not involved, or the King now, King Charles, King Charles III, is not involved in politics, he is he is given you know or, or that 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 infallibility that he can't do anything wrong. Okay? Mm. But now we have learned that in fact you can commit an offense while you are seated in the state house. My argument, I go back to it again, is we can't, we should not wait for five years. We should be able to submit that person to the police. So, I was Minister of Justice, who moved a motion in Parliament against Arabi mm. for the lifting of his immunity. And I don't apologize for it, I don't regret, because we had evidence mm -hmm. that Arabi had done something wrong when he was the head of state. And we wanted him answerable. I can tell you that it was not malicious. We didn't sit in a corner with Michael Sat and I, you know, and he, and he, and he tried to connive against the, you know Arabi. That's not my character. But when PF came into power under ECL, the same people that voted for that motion turned around and voted against it. Okay. Meaning they didn't believe in what they were voting for. That surprised me. But obviously, they exchanged the vote because he, he, I'm told the, the, the arrangement was that you know, um, Arabi made the Israel win in Eastern Province. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, that was their, their time. But we need to get this thing resolved. And the way we get around it is that uh, if you are head of state, we hear that you are doing something wrong at community house, the police must be able to call you and take a statement from you. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, President Kalimba, let's get to look at also something that uh, has been quite topical, and I don't know when it will come to be put to rest, or maybe we have to wait until uh, you know the current president leaves uh, that office. <laughs> is the issue of the president's uh, residence in this case uh, is uh, not housed at uh, Nkwazi House, and that in itself has been a topical issue. We don't know what our law says about uh, where the president is supposed to stay. There is no specific law that says that the, the president must stay in a quasi house. Mm -hmm. There's no law like that. You okay. can, can squat even in Chipata compound. Okay. But the convention 
the convention since the independence is that uh, the president stays at the Kwasi House. The governor of Northern Rhodesia, mm. Sir Evelyn Horn, the last governor of Northern Rhodesia, Sir Evelyn Horn, his residence is what you see as state house today, where the office of the president is. Mm. That was the residence of the governor. Okay. Mm. After 1964, Kaunda built Kwasi House, and the, he started living in a Kwasi House, and the successive presidents have lived in Kwasi House, and there are many reasons for that. Firstly, it's easy access to the office. Mm. Kaunda sometimes used to walk from Kwasi House to the office. The president works long into the night. Not to have a president when he was in the when he was 16 hours. But when he was in the report in 10 hours. Okay? Many like Kaunda, they used to report it, you know, or at the office at 6 Africa of Durham office. He reads his, his intelligence briefing. He works late into the night. Okay? There are two bedrooms in Kwasi House. Mm -hmm. There are two bedrooms. Such that, you know, if the president comes late, comes back late from the office <coughs> and he doesn't want to disturb, you know, the wife, he goes into the next bedroom. I remember when we were students at Unza in 1980, in 19, you know, just shortly before we graduated, we demonstrated as a student, you know, but it's not good job in those days, so we had a lot of energy. Mm. So we demonstrated, you know, over Zimbabwe, you know, because we were very politically conscious. Mm. Not my students were mad, very welcome to me on our My allowance was not an issue to us. We went to the state house, and Keke came out, you know, to address us. And as he was addressing us, the wife walked across, you know, to him. It was about uh, nine hours, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Okay. She had come from UTH where she was uh, visiting a relative who was a patient there. You know? And then she, she whispered something to KK. And after she left, KK said to us, you know, I've not seen this lady for three days. They were in the same house. Some house, because of the nature of the man's duties, national duties, not my sober, I mean, you and I. Kusobana ugu, kwangaro ugu, this is cheap, to be honest with you. Those of us that saw how, you know, men like KK. KK told us, I've not seen my wife for three days. Not because the wife was spending a night somewhere, or KK was spending a night somewhere, they were in the same house. Because they would have a central committee meeting and a cabinet joint meeting running into the early hours of the morning. You can't go and walk into the bedroom where your wife is. So you go and spend. So there are a lot of advantages. The problem is that we are dealing with it you know, um, a young generation now that does not know the past of this country and the, these things are not taught, you know, at, the, at, the, at secondary school uh, history. We continue teaching, you know, who discovered the Victoria Falls, you know, David Livingstone, when that is not even correct. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, the advantages. The other advantage is security. Okay. The other advantage is security. Because, you know, the head of state is the embodiment of the security of this nation. So, so the security of the head of state is a, a major, major priority for state security. So you can't have a president using the same route every day 
to state house using the same route you know back to community house every day there's no secret like that so but clearly the president is not doing anything wrong maybe that's what we should be no it's not it's not it's not a question of wrong mm. or right mm. it's, it's not a question of wrong or right you know yes he's doing something wrong no. because if something happened to him today it can destabilize this nation so to that extent he's doing something wrong that life is no longer his life alone okay okay mm. it can destabilize the nation okay i mean we we were told we have read that trump's house in florida is is, is far much better than the the house he lived in in washington dc when he was president and trump is a rich man he could have decided to be flying from florida to washington dc every day even using his own fuel he would have said i don't want to live you know in the over office you know at the at the at the, at the white house sorry i don't want to live at the white house i want to live in florida and i'll be flying myself in a seven in a boeing 737 to washington dc and back he didn't do that and he would not be allowed to do that so it's not a question of right or wrong or right and wrong mm. it's a question of these are issues of security for the head of state and again i'll give you another example mm. the president is not in charge of his security takes me back to the point that i made earlier that the problem with the state in africa in zambia in particular is that it is synonymous with the person who is in power but the president is not in charge of his security the president must listen to what the security apparatus experts say to him he's supposed to be directed again i'll give you an example in the 1990-91, during the 1990-91, you know, when the, the euphoria of MMD, you know, or, or came to the fore, the, the security people had reinforced KK's security. Hmm. He, had, he had more uh, security vehicles with him. And at a press conference, the problem with the HH was fun. Probably to me, I Okay? We had already started working. A BBC reporter asked KK and said, We see now that you have reinforced your security. Are you afraid? Of your life? Is your life at risk? And KK, first, you know, um, he laughed. That lovely laughter of his. And he said, young lady, I also see the people around me, you know, bearing guns. But I don't know why they are there. I remember that answer very well from Keke at a press conference. He said, I don't know why they are there. I don't even know who brings them. I don't even know what they want. So I'm just as surprised as you are. The point that KK was making was I'm not in charge of my security. I'm not in charge. There is there is a system that takes care of that. Okay? Mm. That's the point he was making. So this is not manner about the right and wrong. We know what and what. No. This is about the, the security system saying to the president you know i'll give you another example mm. there, was a, there was a district conference you know uh, for unip in chongwe okay here now and it was held at the, the zdnc camp 
and the, as the heads of the department we were asked you know to attend it was compulsory we were not even asked we were directed mm. to attend there was a guard of honor that was mounted by ZNS okay and when KK came when KK came he was wearing you know a green green deep green safari suit which blended very well with the, the guard of honor you could hardly see him why because I'm sure he must have been advised by the security people sir this is what you wear for security reasons so, like you've said, uh, President Kalimba, uh, presidency, that office in itself, you know, the assistance. So, meaning that, uh, you know, the current system to the president advise him to say, well, it's okay, you can be coming from. They don't even advise. They don't even advise. Mm. You know, they are, they are scared of losing a job. Okay. They don't even advise, Mana. They don't even advise. You know, they live under the principle, what I call, keeping a job by not doing it. Okay. Okay. Mm. If you want to keep your job, don't do it. That's a principle that I've seen myself in the public service. If you want to keep your job, just don't do it. That's it. But there is also another fundamental, you know, or, or issue, which is related to this. Mm. We have heard that the, the you know. There is some infrastructure that has been added on to that house. Okay. It's personal house. Mm -hmm. Okay? At the expense of the state, money from the treasury. Now, there is no law that allows the state, the treasury, to spend money on my personal property just because I've become president. So that expenditure is illegal. It is illegal today. When HH is in that house, it will be illegal when he comes out. And he runs a risk of getting that property forfeited to the state. The way this property at the arcades was forfeited to the state which was supposed to be Chirubazi uh, Institute for Democracy and Industrial Relations. So, why, why do you want to, to be wrong when you can be right? I get surprised myself. Why do you want to be wrong when you can simply be right? Okay? So, he ran. Now, when they start following him up, you know, after that, you the same with journalists who start holding interviews. No, but why are we following up a former head of state, you know? He's doing something wrong. Now. So the right thing would have been him being housed at um, Kwasi House? Not the right thing, the wise thing. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.